Hey guys, it's Miss Demetrio. I'm going to show you how to set up your online student notebook. Now, I did go over this in the Zoom meeting, and you can watch the video of the Zoom meeting by going to our MyConnect site, but I wanted to provide another resource to make it as easy as possible for you guys to go ahead and do this. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to google.com. After you go to google.com, you are going to log in to your school account not your personal email account, which I know some of you do have. So after you're at your school account, you're going to click those nine little dots. You're gonna click Drive. Now that takes you to your Google Drive page with all of the Google Drive documents that you have created. What you're gonna do next, you're gonna click New in the top corner. You're gonna click Google Docs. And now you're going to notice you just have a blank Google Doc, and that is awesome. Now, the first thing I want you to do while you are thinking about it is you're going to title this. You're going to title this your name and online student notebook. And you're going to click share. And you are going to share with me and you can also add your parent emails in here as well if you would like so you're going to add my email jdemetrio at powerusd.com and you're going to go ahead and you're going to click send and it will come up as shared with one person now at the top on this first page this is just your title page and you can put your name and you can make it look cute you can have any font you want for the first page, any size. This first page is just for you. You can add a picture. We add a picture by clicking insert image and you can do a lot of different things, but um, you can also search for images right here in Google Docs, which is awesome. So maybe because I like kittens, I'm gonna find a picture of a kitten for my title page because this is your title page and you can put whatever you want. And then you click insert. So then you, it's gonna take a minute and my cute little picture is there of some random kittens. Um, now, your second page, what I'm going to do to go to the new page is I'm clicking CTRL, Control, Enter. That takes you directly to the second page. On the second page, I'm going to turn to a regular font. Now, for me, I'm going to do Century Gothic, font size 12, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a table of contents. So I'm going to bold it, and I'm going to write table of contents. Table of contents helps you to organize your what work is on the page. Now, it's more important now than it is normally because of the fact that I'm not there in front of you. I can't just come up and ask you, hey, what's your work? Where's your work from last week? So what you're going to do instead is you're going to create a table of contents, and that's going to tell me what I'm looking at, basically. So. I'm going to have a table of contents, then I'm going to click insert table, and I'm just going to click and drag um, three by five. It, it, you know, you can make it bigger. Um, I'm going to, I can change the background to make it bright and obvious if I want, which I'm doing. I'm going to say page. I'm going to say date. And this last one, you could do description or you could do subject. So I kind of know what I'm looking at. So I created my table by clicking insert table. You don't have to make this this fancy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this Google Doc I'm currently making. I'm going to share that with you. So if you like my table of content, you can just copy and paste it onto your own Google Doc. Um, I'm also going to click the tab button. Now, if I click the tab button, I can add 
I can make my table bigger by adding more rows. So I'm going to do that because I know I'm going to fill them up eventually. So I'm going to just make it this big for now. And I'm going to kind of leave it at this. Next thing I'm going to do in order to help me is click insert page numbers. Now, this one right here skips the first page. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now start. there's no page number on this first page, but it doesn't really matter if you do have a page number on your first page. But my page number one starts on my table of contents, which is awesome. I don't need to add page one, tab, date, April 1st, table of contents. I don't need to add that, that's fine. Table of contents does not need to be in your table of contents. The goal is for me to find the work you're doing week by week on your table of contents. Now. When you're going to go ahead and submit something, here's what you're going to do. You are going to title your page with what you're doing and the date. So let's say I'm doing math on April 1st. And I'm going to write math April 1st, 2020. Now, um, if I'm doing math on paper and pencil, what I can do is I can click insert tape uh, image by camera and the awesome thing about doing insert image by camera is that it uses your uh it uses the the camera on your computer and it lets you take a picture and then what you can do is you can hold up your picture to the camera and take a picture you've done this before on flipgrid during word work or to insert your math onto the seesaw um assignment that we do so this isn't nor this isn't a uh, this isn't something you haven't done before. You've used, you've done this. You just did it on Seesaw for Math Workshop before. So then you'll click camera. I don't think it's going to work because I'm using my camera right now for this video. But you'll click camera and it will come up. It may ask you permission um, if a box pop up, pops up saying, do you have uh, asking for permission to use your camera? Just click OK to give it permission and then you're good. So the so you have so this is an example of your of a header you might use and what I would do is I would go after you update this with your math work you would go back to your table of contents and you'd say okay math is on page 2 so uh, I'm going to write 2 I'm going to write April 1st and then I'm going to write math because I have math on April I have math April 1st right here. And then all you would do is insert an image of your math work. And again, you do that by clicking insert, click image, click by camera. And that is how you are able to insert an image onto Google Doc. And you can do this for anything. If some of you prefer to handwrite your writing, then you can do this with writing. Um, if you do some spelling practice at home, you could do it with your spelling practice. You can, um, with any worksheet that you print out and handwrite, you can go ahead and take a picture and title it and add it to here. And then I'll be able to give you feedback on here. This is something that we have, um, that I'm sure you've seen before, but I can go ahead and add a comment and I, I can say this is how you insert an image by taking a picture. So I can leave a comment and then you can go ahead and reply to this comment once you see it. And that's one way I can give you feedback, which is awesome. Um, that's basically it. As we go along, I may, I'm, in your weekly schedules next week, I may say, answer this question in your notebook. And then what you would do is you would have a header. And of course, your header, your headers have the subject and date. That's all. Just like you saw, saw me do up here, I have math. I have April 1st so that I know exactly what I'm looking at. So what you would do if I have a, if I ask you a question and I ask you to answer it in your notebook, all you would do is put the subject and the date 
put a little checklist for you here. A fate. Update your table of contents. Copy the question you are answering. So you're going to copy. Copy is um, highlight. To, to copy. Highlight the text. Right click, click copy. And then you're going to come back here and you are going to paste the question you are answering by Right click, click paste. Now keep in mind if you can't right click on the device you're using, you can click and hold the CTRL button and then tap C there and click C to copy. That's how you can do it using the using your keyboard and it's very similar for paste which I we've done before I'm just reminding you you press and hold control and then you press click V to paste and that's kind of what you're doing and then of course after this you're gonna answer the question in a complete answer the question in a complete sentence unless sometimes if i say you can answer the question using a list or something else then go ahead and follow my instructions usually i'm going to want a complete sentence for your answer so that you can practice answering questions using complete sentences using paragraph form you may answer using complete sentences in bullet points of course bullet points you just click right here which you saw me do We've got numbers right here and that's about it there isn't a whole lot more to this um if you have any questions please let me know i'm always happy to answer them i hope i answered a lot of your questions here have a great rest of your day and let me know whatever questions you have thank you